this is Gilbert Gottfried, and this is Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Frank Santo Padre. And, you know, a little while ago, we interviewed Adam West, who was the original TV Batman, and our favorite Batman. And um, we figured, what about Catwoman? And uh, so we decided to interview two cat women. Two for the price of one. Two sexy cat women. Julie Newmar and Lee Merriweather, who, to our way of thinking, are still the two hottest, sexiest cat women. There's been other cat women, but to them we say, Fuck you, Eartha Kid. Fuck you, Michelle Pfeiffer. Fuck you, Anne Hathaway. And especially, fuck you, Halle Berry. Now, we have nothing against any of you personally. You're all very attractive. Uh, Anne Hathaway and Halle Berry, I would especially like to fuck. But it was saying fuck you that we like these cat women better. So we say fuck you, Anne Hathaway, Halle Berry, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Eartha Kitt, all of whom we'd like to fuck. But we're not saying we'd like to fuck you here. Uh, we'd like to fuck you in a cheap hotel room by the airport or any place for that matter. But. We're choosing as our favorite sexiest cat women, Lee Merriweather and Julie Newmar. So let me say, in conclusion, fuck you, Eartha Kid. Fuck you, Michelle Pfeiffer. Fuck you, Anne Hathaway. And especially, fuck you, Halle Berry. And we'd like to fuck you. But we're just saying, fuck you, we like these other cat women better. Thank you. Hi, I'm Gilbert Gottfried, and this is Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Frank Santo Padre, and we're here at the Chilla Theater Expo, and our guest this week is an actress and former model who's been working for an impressive second seven decades in movies, TV, and the stage. Her dozens of credits include Dragnet, Route 66, The Man from Uncle, Star Trek, Mission Impossible, Murder, She Wrote, Space Coast, Coast to Coast, and Desperate Housewives. But she's perhaps best known as Buddy Epson's secretary on the long-running drama Barnaby Jones and as Catwoman in the 1966 Batman movie. She's worked with Jack Benny, John Wayne, Phil Silvers, Rock Hudson, and Andy Griffith, and even J. Fred Muggs and Namu, the killer whale. <laughs> Please welcome to the show, Miss America of 1955, the beautiful and talented Lee Merriweather. Oh, good grief. Welcome, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Did I really do all that? I believe you did. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, kind of goodness. sounds like an obituary. It does. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, sweetheart. Thank you very yeah. much. I really do appreciate all that. <laughs> uh, oh, and I'm not getting paid for this, am I? <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. It's okay. Should we have said actress, speech. former beauty queen? <laughs> be more accurate. Which, whichever, yes. Well, and actually, Miss America, well... We don't count ourselves as beauty queens. Uh, it's it's a it's a sort of a misnomer, really. Interesting. Because you're never judged on beauty per se. It's more uh, of your ability to um, handle yourself in difficult situations, like being interviewed and bombarded with questions. <laughs> <laughs> 
know, and handling in the best possible ladylike way that you can. And, um, um, oh, you know, if you're able to answer questions uh, on the spur of the moment with people looking at you from all over the world, knowing that, and they're about, like, what, what was it, 50,000 people in in the convention hall alone. Wow. That kind of situation, so. So, I guess when you, uh, after Miss America, mm-hmm. that's that's when you started getting into acting? Yes, actually, during the year, I was so fortunate because Philco was then a scholarship sponsor of the pageant, and uh, they had the Philco Television Playhouse. And as I was, my monologue was the, an Irish mother of 70 lamenting the loss of her last, last son to the sea. You know, <laughs> they knew I could, could you, handle certain do, amount do, of... Do you remember any of that? Oh. Hmm. Maybe. It isn't that I haven't prayed for you, Bartley. It isn't that I haven't said prayers in the dark night you wouldn't know what I'd be saying. But it's a great rest I'll have now, and long sleeping in the dark nights after salmon. If it's only a bit of wet flour we'd have to eat, or maybe a fish that would be stinking. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Incredible. That's part of it. I don't know where that gave that, the, you know, what your mind yeah. will store. An Irish author, right? You. Wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, John Millington yeah. Singe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. And, and then, so what was the first acting you did after that? Uh, well, well, the two shows on the, on the um, uh, Philco Television Playhouse, uh, one with Mary Astor playing my mother. And that was that from, was very from, exciting. Oh, yeah. Mary Esther from the Maltese Falcon. Maltese Falcon, mm-hmm. right? Yes, exactly. yes, sure. We talk about her. And uh, oh, what a lovely, charming woman she was. And uh, uh, the other one was uh, the Miss America story, and it was a story about a Miss America who runs away from the pageant. And on that show was the first airing of. The song, There She Is, Miss America. Really? Written by, anybody know? I want to say Burt Parks, but I'd be wrong. No, he didn't write it. (laughs) He sang it. He sang it. He He sang sang it a lot. But but the first one to sing it on the show was a man who, a singer, known for singing, had a little white strip of hair right here. Oh, boy. Good? Close? Oh, heavens. Handsome, handsome man, and a good actor. Not Rudy Valley. Mm-mm. No, later, later. Much 50s. later. Oh, Think about fifties. Fifties. In the fifties. Frankie Lane. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just grasping at straws here. Okay, initials J D. J D. Well, it wasn't mm-hmm. James Darren. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, James Darren is here this Jimmy weekend. Jimmy Durante. No. no. <laughs> I would love that. I would love if that were true. <laughs> We're stumped, Lee. Okay, Johnny Desmond. Oh, Johnny Desmond. Yes. Wow. Johnny Desmond was the first one to I sing There She Is. Did not know Miss that. Miss America. And it was written by Bernie Wayne. And he's famous for not only that, but uh, Blue Velvet. Oh, sure. And uh, House Made a... No, no, wait a minute. Uh, oh, dear. It was the coffee. Dun, 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 dun. Chock full of nuts Chock is the heavenly nuts. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he wrote that. That's great. Mm-hmm. We have never had this kind of trivia on this show. <laughs> I just remembered another piece of Hollywood trivia because you said Mary Astor. Mm. There was a, a big scandalous trial because Mary Astor's maid, I think she fired her or something, and she got a hold of Mary Astor's diary. Oh, good wow! And, and, I, it's yeah, news to and me. Supposed to be some uh, some kind wild hank, stuff. A little bit of hanky panky yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah, that she, that she wrote about. Yeah, Ooh. and uh, <laughs> so that. Became well, she, she was best deal. known for the Maltese Falcon, probably. Yes. And Gilbert does mm-hmm. a little bit of Peter Laurie for that movie, oh. don't you, Gil? <laughs> <laughs> your favor, Lee? <laughs> yeah. oh. It's you who bundled it. 
You with your stupid attempt to buy it. Kevin to found out how valuable it was. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Fabulous. Oh, that's wonderful. Right on the money. Oh, yeah, Dad, that's heaven. That's heaven. I love that. I sure hope they don't hang you by that sweet neck of yours, precious. But if oh. they do, I'll always remember you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really good. I, I know I'm... I don't know. Maybe I just haven't seen you enough on television to see all of this. <laughs> He's a mimic. Oh, He's a I, good mimic. I've never seen this. Yeah. That's how great you are. You should see really? as Johnny Desmond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, <clears throat> I, I enjoy talking to a man who likes to talk. I just close. I, I just just close uh, <laughs> mouth, man. They usually speak <laughs> <for all those. laughs> That's you, great. You are a character, sir. <laughs> oh, good. Sydney Green Street. Yes. Right? Who else does Sydney Green Street? <laughs> she got it. I hope. I hope. I, th- I thought, oh, Lord, as I said it, I was, oh, maybe it was Charles Lawton. <laughs> Give yeah, me the cr- the cr- oh, oh, he's go oh, he's off wait, again. One, one, one <laughs> he's off line again. That I I love mm-hmm. one of my favorite lines that I think could have been the mm-hmm. advertisement for that movie mm-hmm. is he goes, uh, Wilma, I uh, you as always like a son to me, but if you lose a son, it's possible to have another, but there's only one. Maltese Falcon. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. He was talking to Alicia Cook. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, now, give me the chronology oh, I, of this. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. We have a guest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Did you go to the... No t- wonder your show is... I heard that your show is very, very popular. It is. No wonder. Oh, that's so good. Well, we told you we had Adam oh, on the show. Funny. And, oh, and Julie oh, was did on you, with did us. You get to, did, did you get a word in an edgewise? Adam's great. <laughs> We did. It was over the telly. So it was... Uh, oh, but he paid Gilbert a tremendous I, compliment. Oh, I he, love... He him. said I would have made a great penguin. Oh, yes, you would have. Oh, of course you would have. <laughs> you would have. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's never too late, Gil. No. <laughs> hey, listen, they, they might be looking for a voice, I've heard. Yeah. Because I heard that they're doing a, a cartoon. That's right. Of it yes, yes. Adam and, and Bert are going to do a cartoon. Yeah, You're that's much. what I'm. I'm so worried about because I haven't heard anything. So I guess probably Julie's first in line. Oh well. <laughs> I did the first movie. That's true. She was the first one on television. Now, that's okay. Now you were. Can I go suck my thumb now? <laughs> <laughs> now you work with Jack Benny. Yes. Both oh, Jack yes. I did two of his shows. Oh, tell it was us such about a Benny. treat. Oh, what a dear man. He, <laughs> the the one thing that I I I love to to tell. I actually I haven't told many people at all, but my my mother came to see the show, tape one because she she was you know a big fan of Jack Benny for years and radio and all that, and so I brought her. And he came and said, would you like to come to my dressing room? And I said, well, I have my mother here. And she said, bring, bring her, bring him. So I said, well, we, we ha- I, have, I think they want me to do some makeup. I said, oh, okay, well, come, come, come whenever you can. So did. I finished and I brought my mother. And he, he was sitting there in his robe, bathrobe. <laughs> and my mother just... I mean, she, well, I don't know what she expected, but I think she expected him in a suit and tie somehow, you know. And, and she went, oh, well, I, I, I uh, and, and started to head for the door. And I said, mommy, it's, it's uh, no, yes, um, this is Jack Benny, and this is my mother, Ethel Merriweather. And, and uh, so she sat down, and we talked. He was so dear, so dear with her. And um, considering her more than mm-hmm. paying attention to me, you know, mm-hmm. it was like it was really very nice and very polite of him and all. And I, I just, I thought that well, he just went up in my estimation. <laughs> well, he's always known for being a very generous performer. Oh yes, you know, yes, and he was fun to work with, fun to work with, and um, uh, it was a cute script. We had a good time, and the second one was this. It's fun. Do you remember any of the sketches you did with him? It was um, 
uh, I, I know I had to, I had to come in, into um, it said Principal Benny. <laughs> so it was his school room. I mean, it was his office. I'm laughing already. And I, I walk over to the phone. The phone is ringing, and I, I said, um, "Oh darn, what was it?" He's, a, he was a famous spy. Um, oh. Uh, uh, in Bond. in no, no no I mean Before. way back in in oh, um, <laughs> the early American history um, Ber- Benedict Arnold Benedict yeah, Arnold okay. High School you know <laughs> that's what I answer Benedict Arnold High School it was something like that mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that was it fortunate to to work with somebody so generous and uh-huh. so welcoming at that early uh, and uh, yes stage of... and and to watch him work watch him mm-hmm. and and uh, did, did rehearse you learn. From watching him, like, what? I learned from everyone. Yeah. You should have seen me. I had, I was mentored magnificently on a set of um, Batman because I had masters working, and just I watched them. I just it was a master class in acting. He, um, Burgess working on a, um, um, a, just a shtick kind of thing where he's. You, uh, he's in the sub. We're in the submarine. This was like the second day of shooting, and he's like this, and uh, and he has. He's looking through a periscope. Periscope. Right. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Right, that's I'm right. Like, yeah. I, like I'm on yeah. television. We're not visuals. <laughs> you can tell that I'm working a periscope here. <laughs> You're talking to a nerd who's seen the movie a hundred times. <laughs> oh, that, I'm yeah, so that good. helps. Anyway, but the uh, but his long um, uh, cigarette holder, and the cigarette at the end, and he's going run silent run deep and and I'm, let's do it again run silent uh, run deep uh, okay and I'm watching this and I'm the the, the, the intense in, and I mean it's just working on just this minutia of, uh-huh. of, of work but it's one of the biggest laughs in the movie. Is he he does work it so that the the, the, um, the cigarette holder and the cigarette go sure. run silent, run deep, and it drops. Yeah, that's great. And it just yeah. and it was just heaven. He he seemed like a cross between a penguin and President Roosevelt. A little, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> well, he would do this thing and do it in the mm-hmm. series whenever somebody mm-hmm. said something that was deflating to him. Oh yeah, it would the, drop. Ci- the cigarette yeah, lighter yeah. would just would just droop, and he would go. Yeah. yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. He played the shtick of that had, character. Yeah, and uh, uh, and and Frank Gorshin would be he worked physically mm-hmm. all his his whole body mm-hmm. was his character and he, he he i watched him and and cesar romero same thing he had the two little sparkly things that go and give people shots oh the joy buzzer yes right, and right. and he was working was he like this and it was like and it was Trying, trying, which would be better this way, so that they don't see him coming. Right. And he's trying all different things. It was fantastic. Three legends, three legendary Jesus. actors. And, and I, I'm, I was at school. <laughs> I was at school. I, and I, I would be remiss to all my listeners if I didn't repeat <laughs> the Caesar Romero story. Lee, be careful of this one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead. According to rumor. We can always cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> According to rumor. What? According to rumor. La, uh, la, 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 Caesar, la, 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 Go Caesar ahead. Cesar Romero was gay. What? And, yes. Oh, come on. Yes. Please, oh. don't interrupt my story. Oh, all right. <laughs> Cesar Romero was gay. And what he was into was he would hire a group of young boys, well, I mean, legal age boys, I think. You're making this and, up. And no, no. <laughs> and this is what I heard. And then he would he would drop his pants and <laughs> instruct these uh, guys to throw orange wedges at his ass. And this was 
<laughs> I, my heavens. Oh, he's making this. He's making it up. <laughs> no, this is what I heard, and and damn it, I swear to it. <laughs> what you heard? Uh, yeah. Okay, well then, okay. I don't have to believe it. <laughs> I don't have to believe it at all. He's asked, he asked Adam the same question, and he asked Julie the same question, and Frankie Avalon, who worked with Cesar Romero, he asked <laughs> did, him the same question. Did you ever see them delivering cartons of oranges? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 I did not. Good grief. Oh, my did, gosh. Did you ever see guys leave his dressing room and go, oh, No. Where's there a sink? My hands are covered with citrus acid. <laughs> Good heavens. You're so bad. <laughs> oh. Moving past it. Let's talk. <laughs> How can how can you really move past that? Poor Lee has agreed to do this, no, not no. knowing what she was getting herself oh, into. I, let's just talk <laughs> quickly since you brought up Catwoman. Let's talk about how you got the part. Julie Newmar was doing a movie. Yes, yes, she was doing a film. And, I think McKenna's Gold. Is that right? It could be. Yeah. Could have been. Could yeah. have been around the same time. Right. I really, I really didn't know why she was. I knew that she had been cast in something, and I think that's what my agent right. told me, and and that they were auditioning actresses for the role and I thought oh oh I'll never get it he said will you just go and audition Uh uh-huh and so I I did I walked into this room and this I swear to you the room was filled with beautiful women zoftic gorgeous I mean you said they just opened it up it was a big uh, oh it was a big cattle call it was uh uh, was two twice as large as this room Uh twice as large and this is a big room once again big room i know yeah we we (laughs) could be in a closet closet right right now (laughs) we're in a small ballroom i'm rather proud of myself i thought of that before he said it. that's right i was gonna say well i guess we could have been in a closet Good for you. I'm pretty good. Okay. Every once in a while, every once in a while, I'm, I, I come up with things. But, but anyway, I thought, well, how in the world are they going to even remember anyone? Right. But, so I thought, what, what, what can I do? What can I do? I just, so I was reading the script, and I was looking, and I was thinking, oh, well, luckily, I, I have had cats all my life, and I love them, and I I know what they do, and you know, so I'll just, a lot of it, it's got to be, you know, my movement and the whole thing. But I thought to stand out. How do you, you know, I'm not particularly well built. I I never think of myself as being good looking. Uh, that's when you grow up with, you know, from a gawky kid, and you, sure, and you you're made fun of at school, and and then when you're a teenager, and you say, oh no, who she she's too flat chested, blah blah blah, and all that, you know, you you grow up that way, and you think I'm not I'm not pretty at all, so I that never entered my mind. But anyway, I thought to remember, and when I walked in, they all looked up, and I. They ushered me into the room, and I said, um, "This is." And one of them said, "No, this is Lee Merriweather." Hello, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> Pleasure, thank you. I talked in this voice, and then I just talked like this and answered a couple of questions. What have you been doing? Mm-hmm. And blah blah blah. And I did, and I did, and I got. And then when they said, "Well, would you read for us, please?" So. And then I started my voice, and I brought my voice down to, you know. And now, of course, from being raucous here in this studio, <laughs> <laughs> my voice is a little harried. But anyway, uh, I, I brought it down to a level that made sense and played, um, and they wanted me to try a Russian accent. Because you were Miss Kitka also, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And so I tried that scene. And, um, oh, I did a lot of kneading of my my uh, knees, you know, like a, a cat Like would. a cat would. <laughs> and, interesting. And I licked, I licked my hand. That was hilarious. You know, kind of like this, and, and rubbed my face, and did that, and, and did all sorts of cat maneuvers. Mm-hmm. And uh, then they said, oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. And as I walked out, I heard, and I thought it was might have been the director leslie martinson yes yeah. les martinson yeah. bless his heart and uh he's i think it was he, but i'm not sure who it was but i didn't tell her to do that that's what i heard and I oh. Thought, 
oh golly, maybe that's maybe that's good, maybe that's good, or maybe it's not. You know, back and forth and back and forth. Well, I went home the next day. I got a call come in, and they wanted to see me again. And I didn't have to read. They just told me that I had the job and wow. that I would be going into wardrobe. I went, <laughs> it just uh, doesn't happen like that. Right, it really sure. doesn't happen like that. But it does, at least this once anyway. And didn't you have to go back and loop cat sounds? Oh, yes. Oh, that was hysterical. <laughs> um, I had, at, at that time, I had never really done any looping. So I, I, but I knew what it was because I had seen movies where it took place in a movie theater or, mo- I mean, you know, movie studio and the, they were doing, making their own language up there, whatever. Okay. <laughs> so I get the paper in front of me and it's meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Meow, meow, spelled out, M and, and drawn out, right. M right. onto the side of the page, meow, wow, 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 all the way to the end. And, all, and I said, what? does anybody know where this comes from? Right, right. In the film, and they'll say, we, we'll show you a film clip, Lee. I said, oh, thank heavens. It's like, I had no idea how, how, how it would fit. You know, I mean, that's one thing to read it and to do it. Okay, is a meow, but it should match whatever I was doing, and so um, it was the riding on the penguins' um, umbrellas and heading to oh, yes. Kitka's apartment. Right, you're and, sliding down those wires. Yes, right, uh, and uh, with this wonderful music <laughs> behind us, but it was a series of. <laughs> Luckily, I, having been raised in Phoenix, Arizona, we had a back fence, uh-huh. and there were cats in the neighborhood. Oh. And though, those, I, my, my mother told me one day, she said, oh, they're mating again. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what that meant at the time. It wasn't until years later I said, oh, <laughs> her gentle way of, right. you know, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't ever put it together. But anyway, that, those were the sounds that I made. Do those sounds one more time. <laughs> Got it. He's a naughty boy. He really is. He, he is. really is. He I is a naughty boy. I should have boy. warned you. Why didn't you? I had no idea. I thought, yes, comedian, he'll be very, very funny. He'll be very, he'll he be very, very witty, but he is a naughty he is. boy. He is. And I may have to spank you. Uh, well, that, that I'm definitely. You're up for yeah, that. Yeah, I'm into that. Oh, Lord. I, I usually pay extra for that. Oh, Lordy. Oh, Lee, you're and, such a sport. And I'm sorry. I thank, shouldn't have done that. And, and thank God we're my in children a hotel. Won't <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tisk, tisk, We tisk. jumped ahead to Batman, but tell us you were. No, I want to talk about how she's going to spank me later. <laughs> the hell with that! <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Tell dear us Lord. about working with the chimp on the Today Show, which oh. is fascinating. And we've talked about it before. We turned the mm. mics on. That as of 2012, J. Fred Muggs, That's, the famous still, chimp, is still living. Is still with us. Yes, yes. The first time that I really saw what he was really like, and that it was amazing. We, we took a flight to, uh, I think it was Oklahoma. It was some Western thing that we were all covering. Everybody was in the plane, Frank Blair, Jack Luskuli, Dave, and J. Fred Muggs, and myself. And I sat in front of J. Fred, and he's at the window in the back, back the seat behind me. And, and so I was in this, the aisle seat, and so I could see him through the crack in the, in the, the seat. And I'm watching him. And the plane takes off. He's looking out the window. He's just looking, he's sitting there in his little suit. <laughs> really is. He's, and he's looking out the window. And they've put the seatbelt on him, and he's looking out the window. And then we take off, and then he's looking out the window some more, and looking out. And then the plane banks, and sun comes into the window. 
and he looks up and he squints. He reaches up and he pulls the shade down, I swear to you. Wow. Pulled the shade down. They didn't tell him. They didn't show him. He hadn't seen every. I hadn't I, because I was seated on the aisle, you know, and I, so I was able to watch all of this. And I thought, oh, he's amazing. I mean, that's really real. <laughs> it's just, woo. We've and, never had a guest who's, who's flown with a chimp. Yeah. <laughs> This is a this is a first. We, yes, we like to brag about. It. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well you can. I've heard chimps are really vicious animals. Well, the only time that he ever did anything to me, and it was my fault. It was my fault. It was in San Francisco, and we were covering the. the um, oh dear, uh, I think it was the Republican convention, and. Uh, they wanted me to take a picture with J. Fred Muggs, but outside and on the balustrade. And there was a flag, um, a lamppost. And they had him all dressed up in a tuxedo. And for a while, he had a bottle of champagne. And that was the picture that one of them t- took. Now, I had put on a cloche hat, so my hair was covered. I was wearing gloves and a new suit. Mm-hmm. They had, uh, the wardrobe had given me a new suit. And I didn't say anything. Stupid. Stupidly stupid. But I I didn't. I just watched and watched. I didn't smile. I was just watching what they were doing. And then they said, come on over. We want to take a picture. Now, they didn't say Lee. They just said, come on over. So I walked over, didn't say anything. I put my hand out. He grabbed my hand and bit me. Well, I was a stranger and coming at at him. Sure, sure, sure. And I went, Muggs, is, Muggs, it's me. And he pulled his mouth away and looked at me and went, oh, this moan, oh, and reached out his hand. I said, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. And then he put his arms around me. Wow. That was wow. really something. That was just amazing. Yeah. Goosebumps. Goosebumps time. Yeah. Gilbert and I met in a similar way. <laughs> <laughs> he put his hand out to shake my hand. I bit him. Bit yeah. him? Yeah. You bit him. Oh, that's it. Yeah, well, I can see you doing that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do we want to ask you about? There's so much. There's so many shows. Oh, Dr. Kildare and, and, yes. and Leave it to Beaver in Route 66. And a favorite of Gilbert's and mine, I'm Dickens, he's Fenster. Oh, uh, yes. And that Dragnet. Was a fun show. And uh, uh, this I loved. Uh, you, on Dr. Kildare, you played five different nurses. That's right. <laughs> nurse, nurse Johnson, Nurse Adams, Nurse Harper, Nurse Tynes, and Nurse Springer. <laughs> Why couldn't you play one nurse? Well, because that would be a running character. Oh. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I figured it out finally. Oh, oh they hire you for one show, and that's it. And then the, the, the rate pay scale goes here. But if you're running character, of course, the pay scale goes whoop, 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 up. And, you know, that's so I... Sneaky. I'm, oh, very. <laughs> and Lee, mm-hmm. would you be willing to dress up in a nurse's outfit for me? For, for you? <laughs> yes. Uh, really? Do you think I am going to dress up in a nurse's <laughs> uniform for you? <laughs> You're sweet, darling. I adore you. I really do. <laughs> I do just oh, about anything, but some, somehow, yes, and I, I've heard about your wife being very indulgent, and I understand <laughs> wives Poor do woman. this, and I, I you know, I, I, I know she's beautiful and all that, but, no, I know, I just, I'm, I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't know where I'd get one, yeah. so yeah. so probably okay. not. No. <laughs> I, and you worked with Dean Martin. Oh yes. There's a great picture oh, of the I two of you on loved, your website. Loved him. And I didn't know what it was from. Uh, it's from the from the show. From the Dean Martin show. Mm-hmm. Oh, the mm-hmm. one with the gold diggers and. Uh, yes, the gold diggers were guests. It was not one done in the studio. We did it out uh, at. Um, ooh, the producers. Oh, Lordy, my name, my brain is not working. Um, his ranch. Uh-huh. And um, I did a dance routine. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, and blazing sun, and I'm dancing in, in my pants and a shirt and the you other know, thing. And, oh, dear. But um, we did sing a, um, you wouldn't really call it a duet. It was the two of us together singing children's songs. Oh. And it was just charming, and but uh, it was, it was like we were in love, and singing these these children's songs, you know, a tisket, a tasket, you know, and all of that it was just very sweet, very gentle, and uh, oh, I just uh, <laughs> for the love with Dean Martin is uh, and, and I heard that with Dean Martin, he wouldn't come in to rehearse. They would just call him when they were filming. Supposedly, the show. he hated rehearsing. I, I don't know if that's. Uh, I think heard that he about was, him and Gleason. He was one of the, those the spontaneous performers. Didn't want to leave it. That the best of leave it. Leave it on yeah. the dressing room floor or the rehearsal hall. Yeah, I I have the feeling that uh, repeating something was not in his ilk. He, he really loved the. Immediacy, and that is the that's a stand up comedian's forte. That's the the sing, nightclub sing, oh, Jimmy Darren, same thing. Yeah. I mean, he's on James Darren, who's here James, this weekend, we yes, should say. Yes, yeah. and um, I've, I've seen that instantaneous, I something happens to them, rehearsal. Well, like Ed Wynn. I, I had the good fortune to work with Ed Wynn on a show, a very small role. I had a tiny role, but I watched him work, and he rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed, but never with anyone around. I mean, I had to hide and behind a, a wall, and I could see him working, and uh, somebody would come in and Walk or do a crew member doing something, and he'd stop, wait till they're gone, and start up again. Never, never showing what he was going to do or what he was working on. But he, he built um, um, a couple of wonderful kind of moments, and I was able to. I was just. I literally. He couldn't see me, <laughs> and I was just watching him up to the side. And I'm gonna put you on the spot again. Can oh, you do an good. Edwin imitation? Oh, no fair. Oh, just try. Do you know how many years ago this was? Robert, <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you do your Edwin for Lee? I, I, it's not even that good. Oh, yeah. well, no, I'm... I'm oh, I, goodness I, gracious. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty oh good. that is good. Oh, I could... <laughs> 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 As I'm, as I'm going, ooh, 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 up, and then I'm coming down. Yeah. I can't believe I got you to do it and win invitation. It's a first. In all your career, have you ever been asked to do Ed Wynn? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Let's ask you about Buddy. You know, uh, when oh. Barnaby Jones came into your life, and, and we've talked about Buddy on the show. We've talked mm. about The Wizard of Oz. Yes. And, the, you know, and that terrible story of how he had that reaction to mm -hmm. the makeup. And yeah. you worked with him for eight years. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yes, seven and a half years. And you were friends, of course. Oh, absolutely. I love that man. I miss him a lot. We used to talk on the phone when we weren't working, you know. And uh, just a dear, sweet soul. And just, I've been so lucky with the people that I've worked with. I really, really have. Except for today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, everyone's luck runs out eventually. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help. <laughs> I don't do that. I don't think those things. And all of a sudden, I thought, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Buddy Epson almost mm -hmm. died during the making of Wizard of Oz. Yes, very they, like, close. Because they, like, spray-painted him. Well, it was a, no, it was a salve that had aluminum something. It was aluminum dust, dust in the makeup. in the makeup. Right, And right. he ingested it. After somehow. switching roles with Bulger. Yeah, Because he was originally so. the Scarecrow, and they switched yes. parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think it was a... Uh, 
I think he was, uh, how long was he in the hospital? I, I, I remember him telling me this story, but I thought it was just so awful. I just, I just blanked. Out. Well, if what I read was to be believed, I mean, MGM mm -hmm. didn't even believe he was sick. They ordered him back to the set. Yeah, that's what I, I read about it. Yeah. yeah he had a great thing. career, and he mm -hmm. did so much. Oh, he did. You know? He was a dear, dear man. Just, oh, he, do you know he wrote thank you notes to everybody who was on his show? Are you serious? That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Wow. That's something. And a show that ran for eight seasons mm -hmm. and, yeah. and several hundred episodes is a lot yeah. of thank you notes. A lot of thank you notes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd see him in his dressing room and he'd be writing out notes, you know, thanking him for their performance. Yeah. He was 95 when he passed. He had yeah. such a wonderful long yeah. run. And, and mm -hmm. I remember him dancing, you know, you, see, you can go back and see him dancing with Shirley Temple. Mm -hmm. you know, he had just a great career. Oh, he told me a story about that that was so wild. He was... Uh, he was. He said that Shirley would work and watch. She would watch a Meglin Kitty learn the dance steps from the choreographer, and she would sit and watch. And that she would say, uh, the the choreographer would say, "You want to try it, Shirley?" And she said, "Is it set yet?" And the choreographer said, well, we've got, you know, we have to change some heights on this. You're going to be dancing on, on pilings and, and uh, barrel heads and, and uh, the wharf, you know. And we, we're we changing around a little bit. When it set, and she'd leave. Come back and sit there and just watch. Is it set yet? Yes, it's set. Son of a gun, he, he was there for that because he had heard that this is what she was doing, and he wanted to watch her and see what she was doing. And she watched, and then she got up. Now, she's watching them from the front. And you figure the dancers are facing her. It's hard to describe on radio, but <laughs> the dan dancers are facing her. So that I know when I've had to learn a dance, I've had to be behind the dancers who were performing so that I can learn which way is right. Most. She was able in her mind to somehow see it and switch it. And that's what amazed Buddy about it. And so she got up and walked around and stood there and they started the music and she did the whole dance. And they said, oh, this is, this is wonderful. Now, now Buddy is nervous about the dance because he's got to, pick her up, put her on a barrel head, got to move her down the rickety raw, uh, rocks and the, and the uh, wharf. And all of a sudden, two guys in suits comes up. Now, this is Buddy telling me this story. So two guys came up, and then he put his finger to his uh -oh. nose and uh -oh. pushed it aside <laughs> like a, the gangster yeah. look, yeah. you know. <laughs> and, um, hey, psst, you, hey, over here. So Buddy went over. And he, they were dressed in suits, so he thought he maybe were, you know, somebody from higher up in the MGM or whatever, or 20th century or wherever it was. And the guy said, you. Yes, sir. But he said, you drop her. You're dead. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> That's incredible. That's wonderful. Shirley Temple had muscle. It's like said, a Frank Sinatra story. Buddy, buddy. Hilarious. Just a, it was, Hilarious. I mean, what, what did you... He said, I didn't drop her. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, of course you didn't, because she's still alive now. Wow. <laughs> so, Incredible. No, no. Shirley Temple. Yeah, yeah. I'll never look at her the same way again. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in Captain January. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And what do you remember about John Wayne? Oh, John Wayne was uh, just uh, amazing. He had, um, <clears throat> I found out years later, that what he claimed to be a broken rib from falling off a bar stool, which he told us that's how he broke his rib, was actually part of the operation on his lung, which we didn't know anything about when we were down in Durango. Making a film called The Undefeated. Yes. Right. Yeah. And 
Um, but he, he, um, I, what, 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 one of the best memories that I have about the undefeated is John Wayne and Rock Hudson together. And they came to a party at the house where I was staying with Mary McCargo Moses, who was playing Rock's sister and or a widowed sister-in-law I think or something like that but anyway and I was playing Rock's wife but they were all at the party and we just had such a great time I I danced with Rock almost all the night long he loved to dance he loved to um, improvise dance you know just uh, just go and, and you don't have to hold on you just really you know we had such a good time and Duke and his buddies were in the kitchen and they were playing cards so the place dwindled out finally everybody from the company went home all that was left was and clean helping to clean up was rock and and john wayne i couldn't he said call, you can call me duke i said i, I just can't i please forgive me i just can't <laughs> mr wayne i just couldn't i couldn't do it so anyway i said mr wayne and so they they finished <laughs> some of the cleaning up. And I said, you fellas, go. Mary and I can f finish up. And I looked around. Marion's not here, not, not anywhere. But I said, go, 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 out the door. And I watched them. And if I had only had any kind of a camera or anything, the best, John Wayne stumbled just a touch. And uh, Rock caught him and held him and then he had his arm around John Wayne and they walked all the way down this dirt road and then turned left to where the the uh, motel was and I just thought oh camera oh my life for a camera to take that picture but I, I have it here in my That's head great. and you know just a, such a uh, a wonderful moment you yeah. had pinch me moments too, where you know you yeah. were entered into a, into a uh, beauty pageant, yeah. and here you are a couple of years later. You're working with Jack Benny. You're working with John Wayne. He's telling you to call him Duke. <laughs> Do you ever have those moments where oh, you say, yes. "I can't"? Oh, I, 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 how did I get here? I am so lucky. Yeah, I, I mean, luck has so much to do. Of with Of course, it. sure. Well, and, the, and the great Phil Silvers. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, he was dear. He was very funny. Um, I mean, he could just look at you and, and you'd, you'd laugh. <laughs> it, you know, he had that something. You have it. You have that, you have that talent. You have that gift. You, you can do something and people will laugh. It's just, you know, it's your <laughs> That's talent. a nice compliment. Yes, it is. And I, and I mean it. You know, you, you're, you're gifted. And Phil Silvers was, was uh, gifted as well. He just, uh, he made everything easy on the set. And Kay Medford was on that was the first time oh, I worked with Kay. Oh, remember Kay Medford from the Dean Martin show? Oh, yeah. yeah. She was funny. Yeah. yeah. And Kay, Kay um, played my aunt. Or was it my, or was it my mother? Oh, Lord. In the movie I made with Andy Griffith. Angel in My Pocket. Angel in My Pocket. I love that movie. Uh, it's a good movie. It's a sweet movie. It's, yeah. I got to do my whistle. Not many people know that I could whistle. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now what I have to do is I have to go across the room. Oh, no, I'll just turn away from the microphone because it's, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Okay. Wow. <laughs> thank you. I wish thank we you. were on film. That was incredible. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Wow. Even better than the Ed Wynn. <laughs> We should we should wrap Lee and, and her yeah. daughter have to get to dinner. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but or, gosh, that's as good an excuse as any. Julia, <laughs> just before you go, yes. can you tell us what movie you went to see with Burgess Meredith? Oh, Viva Maria Maria! What in the heck is that? <laughs> it was the only thing playing, and we were in on location in Santa Barbara. Right. And I I thought. 
We had no TVs in the rooms. We were in a motel. Someplace. Buzz Meredith, they used to call him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I never you did. You never called him Buzz. No, Burgess. Burgess <laughs> only Burgess. And, uh, or Mr. Meredith. Uh-huh. <laughs> and... Well, um, I came down and I, th- I said, I don't even have anything to read and just to sit in the room and lie in bed and uh. so I went down and they s- and um, Burgess was looking at the paper and I said, there isn't a movie theater anywhere around, do you? And the woman behind the desk said, oh yes, within walking distance, within walking distance, there's our our movie theater, and I said. Purchase. You want to go to the movies? He says, oh, yes. <laughs> yes, let's go. Let's go. Let's go now. I said, well, we don't know what's planned. He said, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Said, okay, so we hot-footed it down to them. And it was about, oh, maybe a 10-minute walk or thereabouts. And, here's, and it, was, it was a foreign film festival. Isn't that funny? <laughs> and there's Viva Maria Maria. <laughs> so we walked in. There's no one there. <laughs> There's no one there. There's a kid who's taking the tickets. He's making popcorn, and he 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 opens the door and to let us in, and we we pay. He uh, Burgess took me to the movies. He paid for it. I said Burgess, no, 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 no I pay. Okay, all right. So we sit there, and we've got popcorn. And and we're watching the beginning of Maria Maria. Catwoman and the Penguin go to the movies. <laughs> and yes, and he puts his feet up on the seat in front of us. Uh-huh. And the guy, the kid, came down with a flashlight and flashed it like this. Uh uh-uh, uh, no 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 oh. feet on that thing. <laughs> and he's and all and he put his feet down. He's doesn't he know who we are? Oh, that's right. <laughs> I said, oh that's- Burgess, and he said, well, come on. And so he put his feet back up again. <laughs> it was hysterical. Gilbert loves. We talk about uh, of mice and men. And, oh, you know, yes. such a what a brilliant performance that was. It's a funny My. thing. People think, oh, well, the Penguin and Rocky is really what they know him from. Right. But he had this great. But he directed mm-hmm. a great picture called The Man on the Eiffel Tower. Oh, that's yes, yeah. yes. And oh my gosh, directed, I forgot about that. He was that. a director too. He just oh. had all kinds of talent. Mm-hmm. And Gilbert and I talk about of mice no. and men all the time. Oh. Such oh, a good, yeah. such the a penguin good penguin and the Wolfman together. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, I never I even did. thought it that way. Yes, of course. Penguin Laura's and the Wolfman. Del- yeah, which was Lon Chaney. <gasps> and you're the only oh. person to ever play Catwoman and Lily Munster. <laughs> That's a yes. Well, I guess I did. That. That's true. <laughs> with the Munsters today, with Monsters John Shuck, today. who we also love. Oh, John is dear. We have we've had such fun with that series. Just and because we filmed that in front of a live audience, da da, ah. little different than anybody else. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. No, you really had to, uh, you know, be there every second. <laughs> there's was, so there's so much you've done. There's so much we could cover. <laughs> and God, we didn't talk about Star Trek, and we hardly oh, talked about. Got, any I'll come back Griffith. again. We'll do another one. We want to sure. ask you about Victor Bono next time. Oh, don't. Huh? <laughs> don't. Okay, we won't ask you about Victor Bono. <laughs> oh no, it's all right, Victor. Oh, he was so sweet, and well, he's gone. Yeah, he was. Just... I was telling Gil, Gil and I were talking about him once, and he used to come on the Tonight Show and read original poetry. Do you remember this? Oh, mm. yes. Victor Bono? Yeah. He was funny. Yes. I mean, he oh. was funny like stand-up comedy uh-huh. funny. He could you know? be. Yeah. He and could very well be. Well, to play King Tut the yes. way he did, yes. he had to have had comedic talents. He had real chops. Oozing out of he every would, pore. He would come on the Carson yep. show. They would set up a lectern for him, and oh, he'd come out, and he I would remember. he would read. And I remember one line was a, a little kid teasing him, saying, there's the fat man from Batman. He would write his own. They were sort of oh. Ogden Nash kind of poems, uh-huh. but yeah. but crazy, very clever. I, I remember him doing an entire poem about eating on cruise ships. Yeah, yeah. And he said something <laughs> like, "He was brilliant." And the rocking seas and salty air and butter, butter everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask you next time. I was on that ship once. Oh yeah. Oh, I really was. I mean, in the middle of the Mediterranean. My mother and I, oh, she was taking me to Greece. She was going to see Greece, and we were going to get there. And, and, and so all of a sudden, oh, wow, the whole thing. I mean, literally tables going oh, yeah. like I've been like on this, cruise ships. Down, like that. Oh, I thought, well, I guess 
Well, at least I'm with my mother, and yeah. we'll go down together. Yeah. Well, and that'll be it. Was it. a little like this interview, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the way I feel. I'm, I'm with my daughter here in this room, and um, we we'll go to, down together. We don't then. want you to miss dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Gilbert Gottfried, and this is Gilbert Gottfried's oh, Amazing Colossal. Oh, is that who you are? <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. Gosh. I really thought I was, oh, I thought he was somebody else. I really did. Oh Most my people gosh. think it's Alec Guinness when I talk. Perfect. You couldn't have picked a better one. Better oh, one. heavens. Oh, really and, good. And, and I would like to continue this interview, but uh, Catwoman herself, <laughs> Lee Merriweather, <laughs> promised to spank me. Uh, we have it recorded. She said she'd spank me. And we're in a hotel. <laughs> and I know an opportunity when I leave. <laughs> I don't lift the gift horse in the mouth. Oh, Gilbert, <laughs> come and follow me. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> Lee, we'll do it again, and we'll ask you more stuff. Oh, Talk good. about Lee Strasberg and, uh, and not Victor Bono good. and... All kinds of things. <laughs> oh, and and she she did uh, clarify that she swore she walked into the dressing room when uh, Caesar Romero. Oh, cut that what? out! <laughs> <laughs> You're so bad. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just, I really apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize know you were every week. Something Lee. classical <laughs> when you tuned in, but <laughs> it's it's been fun. Thank you for doing it. <laughs> we had you. a blast. <laughs> I, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> you silly Billy. He's a silly man. Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried. And this is Gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast with my co-host, Frank Santo Padre. Our guest today is a dancer, choreographer, author, and Tony-winning actress who appeared in classic musicals like The Bandwagon and Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and hit TV shows like Star Trek, Bewitched, Love American Style, and Route 66, and The Twilight Zone. But she's best known for her iconic portrayal of Catwoman on the 1960s Batman series. And for my money, the only Catwoman, the very sexy Ms. Julie Newmar. Well, hello. What can I say after that? How are you, Gilbert? (laughs) (laughs) That's some introduction. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Now, before we start to anything else on on your career, can I just hear you say uh, your famous word on Batman? Uh, yes. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't know how I do that. I, I was just around his ankles or something. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? <sighs> I think it's a vibration more than anything. <laughs> it was a great little catchphrase for you. you. You know that every guy right now is uh, is uh, breaking into a sweat. Oh, my goodness. It's not that hot in New York, is it? <laughs> oh, my. Julie, didn't you say that I, I saw you say somewhere that, that men come up to you and, and tell you uh, all the time that you were their first crush or their first turn on? Yes, they do do that. They do that, and it's becoming a book. Oh, really? I skipped a few steps there. Yes, they they come up and they tell me that, and, and of course I would look surprised, and then I would say, well, how old were you? And the answer was four, three, four, five. I love that. That's <laughs> so nice. But you'll see. Um, so you'll at see. four and five, they were already getting turned on. Well, that's... Crush is a, is a little bit better, or um, maybe it's an eye opening, or it's um, a self awareness. 
I won't get too methodical about this. <laughs> I, I just remember you in the cat suit and what I was thinking. Well, we're, I won't ask what you were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> what you, were you feeling? <laughs> Let's go out and play. Let's roam the neighborhood. <laughs> Let's get in trouble. <laughs> now, uh, you, your mother, and this this mm-hmm. would explain where you got your legs from, your oh, yeah. famous legs. Oh, yeah. Your mother was in the Ziegfeld Follies. She was in nineteen. Well, it was actually nineteen nineteen. She was in the Ziegfeld Follies, and and Eddie Cantor said that my mother had the most beautiful lakes in the Follies. Now, your mother. Well, you you said that Eddie Cantor said she mm-hmm. had the greatest legs, and now it's it's funny that years later you would be in the Eddie Cantor story. Oh. I think that was a walk through or a faint through or <laughs> how did anyone ever even notice? It's almost embarrassing to have that on my biography. But it's true. I think <laughs> I was there. Isn't that isn't the one with Eddie Cantor makes an appearance, uh, but he's uh, not Eddie Cantor. Well, uh, no, Eddie Cantor, at, it's a very weird movie that they used to show a lot on TV when I was a kid. Uh-huh. And uh, Keith Brazell, yeah, famous entertainer at the time, <laughs> played uh, Eddie Cantor. And at the very end of the movie, when the movie ends, the real Eddie Cantor is watching the Eddie Cantor story oh, with his wife. And he goes, I never felt better in my life. And he puts <laughs> his coat on and walks out. How strange. Yeah. She, she was... Very yeah. Good. His wife asked him, uh, "How are you feeling, Eddie?" And he never felt better in my life. Just because he's watching the Eddie Cantor yes. story. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Without heels, how tall are you? Oh, you would ask. You know, I think I've never measured myself, but I think I'm five eleven. Wow. I, mm-hmm, That's why they put you in the back. Mm-hmm. You worked with Joe Bessa. From yeah. The- the three. comic, right? Yeah, the three little stage. guy, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. He was in the rookie with you. It, right. Tell me more about him. <laughs> <laughs> He's long Every gone. Every time I tell the truth, people laugh. I just don't get it. You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, to tell me. Well, it's learn me. Actually, if you have you, nothing to is say, is he there about in the studio? <laughs> He, he, I remember him as being one of the three Stooges. Oh. Yeah, Joe's long gone now. And he played Stinky in, uh, with oh. Abbott and Costello. Yeah, he did yes. a lot of stuff. Oh, the greats. It, boy, we were so lucky when we worked with all those great comics. You start out as a dancer, and yeah. you're, you're on Broadway in Little Abner, and, you don't, and mm-hmm. you, it's a non-speaking part, and mm-hmm. suddenly uh, you're, you're, you're getting comedy roles all over the place. Well, a great piece of luck was Marriage Go Round. I was 24 years old, and I have a starring part, of, and an off it took was my speaking career. Really in truth, really in truth, my real career is was a dancer. That's what I loved most doing. But, but acting always makes you, your popularity is, more widespread. You just, more people notice you. So I'm much more remembered for the acting roles than, than dancing. Mm-hmm. Now, but, get, getting to your most famous part, and how did you get the role on Batman? Oh, that I can only guess at. Um... I have to make quick decisions in television. They called me up. I was in New York on a Friday, and my brother was there visiting from Harvard with some of his friends, and I get this phone call, and I say to my brother, gee, somebody in Hollywood wants me to play, to do um, something or other role on Batman, and his eyes light up. He almost leaps off the couch. He (laughs) says, Batman, that's our favorite show at Harvard. We all stop and watch that show. 
And I said, well, I don't know, should I? He said, he practically pushed me out the door. And anyway, I got on the plane the weekend, and they gave me the script on Monday and Tuesday we were fitting, and Wednesday we were shooting. It just all happened in a blur. Yeah, yeah everything. Television and happens. It, mm. It's but. funny. Uh, on this podcast, we just interviewed Adam West. Mm. Oh. And... Is it? Yes. No, go ahead. Tell us a little. Isn't he wonderful? Yeah. Wonderful. Go ahead. You gave tell us, me. You gave us a great episode. No, no. Yeah. It's your job to tell me. <laughs> well, I loved working with him. He's, he, he was perfect in that part. <laughs> and yes, and so was Burt Ward. I mean, they when they came to casting the, the Batman show, oh my goodness, it really roared. And, and, and the, show, the show was brilliantly produced. Frank and I were just talking about that Adam West used to say that you gave him some rumblings. Stirrings. Yeah, Certain stirrings, stirrings right, below yeah. his utility belt. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, he, he yeah. dined out on that line for a long yeah, time. That's, I know. That's his, one of his favorite lines. Yes. Mm-hmm. It, it, because it was written by these great writers, Stanley Ralph Ross. Oh, I wish you could interview him. He's not among us now. But no, anyway, no. that's why the show is so good, because of the writers. Oh, my goodness. Now, I heard yeah. you talk once that you Batman would get in a lot of trouble with the censors. Yeah, he did. Go on. Well, yeah, I, I saw you in an interview. You said that mm-hmm. Batman would get in trouble with the censors, and a lot of times the writers uh-huh. would sneak dirty words on the air in Yiddish. In Yiddish, exactly. <laughs> Clever. Yes, yes. Or here's another way to do it. If you say the word fast enough, it kind of slides over their heads. Mm-hmm. Funny. Did, yeah, did yeah. they give you any indication, with Bill Dozier, the producer, uh, Julie, of how of how the series was supposed to go? I mean, you you did an early episode in '66. You were in the first oh, season. Oh no! Did they say play it camp, play it straight? Did they let you do what you wanted to do? Oh, you had to play it straight. If you didn't play it straight, you you just you'd muck up the gears. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had to because it's so over the top. So that means the straighter, the even more straighter that you play it the funnier it is. If you play it funny, then it it's, it takes it off key or it, it kind of, you know, it doesn't, doesn't work. The, the timing isn't right. It doesn't, it has to emotionally hit a certain part, a certain reality point. You have to say, oh yes, that's true, corny, or exaggerated as it is. But um, there's a certain art in, in playing high comedy. Now, do you remember the other villains on the show that you No, because I didn't work with them. Oh. Well, you worked with Michael Rennie when he played the Sandman, the actor from oh, The Day the Earth yes, Stood Still. Oh, yes, you're right about that, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, he had a very big, heavy, um, collegiate raccoon coat. That's which right. I think he complained <laughs> he was... about rather a lot. <laughs> he was the Sandman. Yes, yes. Yes, he was someone who put people to sleep. I never quite understood his character, but you guys had some fun chemistry. Ah, yes, yes. And you also worked with Leslie Gore, the the pop singer. Well, she was the niece of the assistant director. Oh, she was Howie Horowitz's niece. Right, exactly, and a star on her own in those days, and became an even bigger star in uh, writing her music and uh, it's my party. recording and all that, yes. It's funny because you were. I remember even as a kid thinking that you were villainous and you were you were scary in a way. But you always found the comic beats. You always found the comedy moments. Well, when you you have henchmen written into the script that have an IQ of about ninety nine, and they <laughs> mess up everything that Catwoman wants to get done, you know it has to be a lot of fun to do, and to play. And it, yeah, it just had just total glee and happiness from remembering this show. One of your henchmen was Jock Mahoney, who was, I right. think, Sally Field's father-in-law or stepfather. Oh. Something like that. I'll have to do yeah. my do a little bit more research on it. Oh. 
he didn't tell me about. And you did an episode with Chad and Jeremy. Speaking of singers, yes, and they they're touring now these days. They're still around. I saw them. Mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. I think Chad and Jeremy are the ones who a lot of people think uh, Mike Myers got his Austin Powers look. Interesting. From. Well, they turned up in a Dick Van Dyke episode too. Oh yes, Chad where and they're Jeremy, kind of like the Beatles. Yes, and uh-huh. they have to hide out. At the Petri House. Yes, on the Batman episode, Catwoman steals their voices, which you must remember, Julie. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. Yes. She did a good job, yes. And they were always killing you off on that show. They would always... They So many Catwoman episodes ended with your death. Oh, it's impossible. Yes, I just fell into a pit with all that gold. (laughs) The first one, you're in a bottomless (laughs) pit in the perfect run. but but cats have nine lives. So they have to bring me back, right? They did. They, six times. I did six one-hour shows. And wh- why did Eartha Kitt replace you? I, I don't think I ever knew. Um, Were you doing something? Were you doing a film? I, You know, I don't recall, but I think it was a good idea to bring a new um, look on the, on the show. And that was in the third uh, year. Yes. And I... It, but, they were half hour. She did a half hour show. I did hour long shows, so it was much more difficult then because when you have to write for so many characters in within twenty two, twenty six minutes, it's much trickier, much more difficult. And um, and you so- you were on with another guest we've had on the podcast, yes. Barbara Feldon. On oh. Get Smart. Oh, that's right. You were the you were the maid, the housemaid who turned out to be a spy for chaos. Uh, yeah. Did I have a French accent or a Swedish accent? Something. I, I think was always you were, hide I think you my, were Swedish again. I was always hide from my accents. Yes. And what was <laughs> it like working with uh, Don Adams? Divine, divine, wonderful. Comics, comics are very serious people. Mm-hmm. They right. are the most serious people. Mm-hmm. You did a lot of 60s TV, Julie, and, and you, I did, did. you did yes. Star Trek, you did The Monkees. We just talked to Mickey Dolenz oh, last week. The Monkees was so much fun. That was probably the most fun I ever had. Yeah. You played uh, a girl who each one of the monkeys sees and is immediately hypnotized by. The goddess yes. of the laundromat. The, yes, April. April Conquest or something. Uh, April Conquest. Yes. Yep. And, and you said you had kind of a crush on Davy Jones. Well, who didn't? He was the shortest. He was the dearest and <laughs> he sweetest. He was a foot and a half taller than him. I love that short man. I like short men. They I'm do pretty sure. Twice. Gilbert's very I short. Yes. Too. I can tell. Yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm practically Billy Barty. <laughs> she can tell over, oh, the, over my, the phone. Oh, what a... Speaking of funniness. Oh, my goodness. You know that Billy Barty used to play on my father's football team at Los Angeles City College. Are you serious? For people who he don't know, Billy Barty in. was a midget. Now, now my father's six feet four, okay, and they're <laughs> having this big game, you know. So I don't know whether it was during the halftime or what, but they brought Billy Barty in, and he was <clears throat> he would take the place of my father. He was, but my father was a coach, and my father was also tight end. <clears throat> And he would catch the ball and run around, and, well, the audience was just wildly entertained. So, oh, yeah, Billy Barty, we love him. Well, your father was a player in the in the old American Football League. Do I have that right? In the AFL? Oh, yes. In, in uh-huh. the, so, yeah, so, they didn't bulge so much. You have seen the, all that and all that goes back. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess Billy Barty was part of the halftime yeah. show. The yeah. An- what yeah. what yeah. other famous midgets have you known? <laughs> Your pardon. <laughs> I Did told Billy you I'm not short, man. <laughs> Did Billy they, Barty ever make a pass at you? He, that's what he. That's his profession. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, he's Mr. Did Smarty Did he ever pants. pinch you on the ankle? That's Did he hilarious. bite me? No, no. But unlike Bill, uh, Ben Blue, he didn't try to pick me up. Who who tried to pick you up? Ben. Blue oh, Ben Blue, the silent comedian. In one, yes, in one of the, uh, the comedy sequences I did with him, and he broke two of my ribs. And it, I didn't laugh for three days. Wow. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. I, I remember 
Uh, when when I was uh, a boy in elementary school, mm-hmm. uh, another boy snuck in. He smuggled in uh, an issue of his father's Playboy. Mm-hmm. And, and it was like a pictorial of you and uh. Zero Mustel. Zero Mustel had his clothes on, of course. Yes. And I, I still remember that pictorial. Well, they didn't tell me that they hid a photographer on the set of the film that I was doing in London with uh, Zero Mostel, who's such a genius. Oh, it was so much fun working with Zero Mostel. He never does the same thing twice. He's just a crazy man. And for the first two weeks of shooting this film, which incidentally was called Monsieur Lecoq, how's my French? Monsieur Lecoq, C-O-Q, you can, mm. we spent that in a bathtub. Why? Don't ask me why, but it was in the bathtub. <clears throat> and the bathtub, oddly enough, was a, this black marble, but it was painted black marble, and bits of the paint would sort of come off in the, in the, in the water. But all the time, what I mostly remember is this this Brit, this fellow, this prop man coming around with a hose, a tiny hose which he would put into the bath water, and, and there was a machine which would blow bubbles. It was to keep the bubbles so that they were sufficiently high to make everything presentable. You can imagine. Yes, can you? Are you still there? Yeah, Gilbert's just, uh, he's excited. Yes. <laughs> so right, so okay. you, yes. see, because a lot of actresses wear, yes. like, kind of a bathing suit. Oh, no, you can't do that. Well, you can, but um, I so, didn't. So you never posed, Julie. These were pictures that were taken no, without your knowledge. No, I never Sure, sure, sure. No, 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 no. I just, there were a lot of bubbles. Right. I felt, I felt quite presentable. Until I had to get out of the bathtub, and and then the, 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 this has seemed rather awkward and strange to me. The AD, the assistant director, said, "Gentlemen, would you please kindly turn your backs? Miss Newmar is going to get out of the bathtub." And they all did. They did. And, yeah, well, they all did. Of course. Fools. What? Yeah, yeah. fools. What a yes, yes. bunch um, of assholes. Well, men <laughs> they, they, wait wait a minute. Days. These guys <laughs> had Julie Newmar naked in front of them. And they turned their backs. Well, they were English. They were told to. Oh. They, they were, <laughs> they were, no sex, good please. They were British. They, were, they made my life comfortable. Ju- we Julie, had tea at four in the morning, I, ten, in, <laughs> 10 in the morning, at four in the afternoon, no matter what happened. I would have been great. staring 24 hours. No, you weren't allowed to do that. Turning back yeah. to Batman in a moment, Julie. You, you, Thank you. you. No, I want to think about her naked more. <laughs> I, oh, I, I, now, you have to go buy them. Magazine. It's online, by the way. The picture, the, the view of the tub. There's uh, a. You have a story about playing on Batman uh, mm-hmm. with a, a very young James Brolin. <gasps> oh, what a dear! What a sweetheart! Do you know he married one of the? I think it was the um, the assistant, the um, one of the producer's secretaries. That was his first wife. I didn't know that. He's now married to Barbara Streisand. Everyone knows that James Brolin is. Married now to Barbara Streisand. <clears throat> well, he was in one of the sequences of Catwoman, and he plays this, well, he's a truck driver. Hmm? And he's driving this truck, and he is quite attractive and quite fun to work with. But I'm an 80-year-old woman disguised. I'm dis- Catwoman disguised as an 80-year-old woman. I look really not so, so. so I put my hand on his knee, you see, now I couldn't do that as Julie Newmar. I'd have to be this aged woman, see? But things got a little bit warm under the collar. Yes. Oh, he got I'm a little excited. I'm not telling you any more about that. I remember that episode. You're stealing a. You're trying to steal a rare violin. Yes, yes, the Stradivari. That's right. Yes. And you're and you're dressed as an as an old lady, and you're yes. And again, there's the producers putting you in a in a in a, a place where you can play comedy. <laughs> Oh, that's so much fun. It's so much fun being anything other than yourself. By the way, when Adam was on the show with us, he played he paid Gilbert a wonderful compliment. Really? 
Yo, but he said yeah. I would have made a great penguin. Really? Yes. <laughs> he doesn't have the tummy for it. <laughs> Well, Gilbert loves Burgess Meredith, so he was flattered by the comparison. Well, he, and Burgess had to learn to spoke, and he was really upset about that because he even told the producer, you know, I, it, took me, it took him months to quit smoking. And he says, if I become a smoker again, I'm going to whatever you, you know. <clears throat> uh, you remember, he just like FDR, like Franklin Delano Roosevelt had the... Uh, yeah, the yeah, the holder. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, so he keeps that in his mouth. Like, yeah, you like that part, huh? Oh, like, yes. Talk like the penguin, go on. Yeah, no, I just thought that was on, the Gilbert. greatest like compliment. compliment. Yeah. You sounded like that at the top of the show. <laughs> that's, a, that's his normal voice. Now, 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 here's here's someone I don't know if you've ever worked with, and yeah. I don't know if I've ever discussed on the show. Um, another villain on the show was the Joker. Oh. Have you ever worked with Caesar Romero? Caesar, we all loved him. Such, such. A, oh, he was. Such a good guy to be around, just a gentleman and funny and dear and and warm and kind. And you you remember him as a great dancer in his earlier Latin days. Latin lover, sure. <gasps> and a lover and so outstanding, so great looking. He was everything. Now, he I heard everything. a story. Yeah. I don't know if you can confirm it's, it. It's true. I know what you're going to tell Which it. one? About the mustache. No, no, no. No, but go ahead. Tell me the mustache and I'll tell you. Tell me your story first. Be careful, Julie. Watch it. Okay. I'm all ears. Okay. Tell the story. I I heard, you know, in real life he was gay. and And um, that I heard a rumor that he used to gather these boys around him and he would pull down his pants and underwear and have them fling Orange wedges at his ass. Oh, orange what? Wedges. Orange wedges. Wedges. Were they peeled or unpeeled? <laughs> that matters. Julie, you're such a good sport. Yeah. Now, if they were unpeeled, I would have objected. Okay, <laughs> or not. So, so in okay. all your you years... You know the story of the, of the mustache? Oh, okay. that he refused but, but to wait. shave the mustache. Wait, right. okay. wait. Here's the, let me tell you the story of the mustache. I, okay. I heard he got uh, orange juice in his mustache. <laughs> well, we told that that story. Okay, <laughs> so he had a mustache, but you know it was always it was always covered up with makeup. He would not shave it off. Oh yeah, that's famous. Okay, it's famous, but why? Because in his early twenties, he had, he had been smitten with or fallen in love with a woman who was about 10 or 12 years older than he, and he, he was very taken with her. And this woman evidently felt he was the Latin charmer, and a great deal of it had to do with his mustache. So from that day onward, he's ne- never removed it. Interesting. It was always his, his, part of his aura, part of his... Uh, um, who he was. Yeah, he made them put the white grease paint over the over the yeah. stash. Yeah, yeah. Well, I works in television, maybe, but um, I don't know. Have you seen the, the new DVDs that Warner Brothers has put out? We haven't yet. Have you seen them? Uh, th- these are the DVD and the Blu-ray of Batman '66. Sure. That's I hope they were co- kind enough to send you a complimentary copy. No, oh. they've not. Bastards. They were supposed to, and I've not received it. Should be my gift. It right? should be. Yeah, well, I, I did one of those after talks for them. Anyway, anyway, the, the film is just gorgeous. Because they've been restored for the first time in many, many restored, years. Restored, yes, and the color is out of this world, and all the, uh, it looks incredible. Better than, it, than when, when it was first shown, which was on smaller screens. So now you can see it on the big screen, and all its color, colors, it's really gorgeous. You uh, were having a, a famous feud with a neighbor of yours. I can't. Who is that? In Brentwood. Oh, oh really? Uh, uh, he, did you know he moved? Oh, yeah. no, <laughs> finally moved. Jim, Jim Belushi. Oh, Mr. Belushi. From everybody, uh, the world according everybody to Jim. Everybody loves Jim. 
Yeah, yeah according to Jim. The show? According, according to Jim. To Jim. Jim. Yeah. Well, he changed the title. Okay. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we should set this up for people. You and Jim Belushi were next door neighbors in Brentwood. Yes, I'm still here. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And there mm-hmm. was some there was some some conflicts. Well, Mr. Belushi wanted to build the three story house where you you can only have your garage, and I brought that to the attention of the authorities. And it made him rather mad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, we had a skirmish, this, that, and the other. And eggs did flew over the, uh, over the couch or whatever. Oh, did you was. did you egg his house yard. at one point, Julie? What's that? Did you egg his house at one point? I might have done so. <laughs> I mean, listen, that's happened to other people. <laughs> Performances and such. Oh, I don't like I mean, your Catwoman throw eggs at, at, at his house. Oh, Must have seemed dear. surreal to him. Oh, dear. Oh, my. Wow. But you, you finally settled it by doing an episode yes. of his sitcom. Settle, settle, settle. You always settle, settle, settle. Good for yes. you. you. Do not go to court. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, I've had fun. We have been talking to the more sexy than ever Julie Newmar, Catwoman herself, who to this day still gives Frank and myself and all our male listeners some stirrings under their utility. Curious, curious stirrings, yes, to quote Adam. Yeah, curious Uh, stirrings under uh, our utility belt. And most importantly... You just let me get away with it. (laughs) Most importantly... Mm-hmm. Julie Newmar came on my podcast today and confirmed that when she was on the Batman set, she accidentally walked into Cesar Romero's now cut that out. dressing room <laughs> and saw him standing there with his pants around his ankles and boys throwing orange wedges at his naked ass. Unpeeled ones. I didn't hurt him. I thought about his well-being. So, yes. so you think he was so sophisticated oh, yes. uh, that he needed it yes. peeled first? Sophisticated, <laughs> and, and yes, and he laughed. Oh, yes, yes. He, he made everything just a pleasure to do, mm-hmm. to perform. He was wonderful. Well, God Julie, bless you. Thank Ju- you. Julie, you were wonderful. Thanks for doing this for us today. Uh, I enjoyed it. Thank it was you. a treat. Julie Newmar, huh? Julie uh-huh. Newmar. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Julie. This has Thank been you. Gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast with my co-host Frank Santo Padre and the woman who confirmed the Cesar Romero story, Julie Newmar. <laughs> Thanks again, Julie. Thank you, Gilbert. Thank you, Frank.